Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Angel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. For latest updates, you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Mania. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. So, let's begin. Hello, in today's video, we will look at mandibular first premolar. Premolars, as they mostly have two cusps, are known as bicuspids. There is a total number of 8 premolars in the oral cavity, with two of them located in each quadrant, the first and second premolars in both upper and lower jaws respectively. The first premolar is the fourth tooth from the midline, while the second premolar is the fifth tooth from the midline. The focus of this video is the first premolar only. Mandibular first premolar develops from four developmental lobes. These are the buccal, mesial, distal and lingual lobes. The buccal lobe forms the large buccal cusp, lingual lobe forms the small and poorly developed lingual cusp and the mesial and distal lobe forms the mesial and distal marginal ridges respectively. The buccal cusp is the only cusp of the tooth that comes in occlusion with the maxillary premolar, hence it's referred as a functional cusp. However, the lingual cusp does not form any occlusal contact with the opposing teeth. That's why it's called the non-functional cusp. Since the lingual cusp is really small, underdeveloped and non-functional, the term bicuspid becomes a misnomer here. The tooth resembles mandibular canine in that it has a large, only occluding buccal cusp. Let's study each aspect of the tooth separately. From the buccal aspect, the crown is roughly trapezoidal in shape. The middle part of the tooth is more prominent, resulting in a large pointed buccal cusp and creating a prominence at the middle lobe of the tooth called the buccal ridge. The mesial and distal developmental depressions separates the three buccal lobes of the tooth at the buccal aspect. And here will be the mesial and distal sides of the tooth. The tip of the buccal cusp is located a little mesial to the midline of the crown. The mesial cuspal slope is shorter than the distal cuspal slope. The cervical line is convex towards the root. The mesial and distal contact areas are located in the middle third. The mesial and distal outlines are slightly concave from the cervical line up to the mesial and distal contact areas. The outline of the buccal aspect of the root of the mandibular first premolar almost resembles root of the mandibular canine. From the lingual aspect, the outlines are almost same as the buccal aspect. The small and underdeveloped lingual cusp and the large buccal cusp both are visible. Because of the small lingual cusp, most of the occlusal surface is also visible through this aspect. The mesial and buccal marginal ridges are visible as well as the buccal triangular ridge of the buccal cusp. An important characteristic feature of the mandibular first premolar is the mesiolingual developmental groove. This groove is actually a line of demarcation between the mesiobuccal lobe and the lingual lobe or let's say this vertical groove separates the mesial marginal ridge and the lingual cusp. The root is much narrower at the lingual aspect making the mesial and distal sides of the root more visible. From the mesial aspect, the buccal and lingual outlines are convex. The convexity of the lingual outline is comparatively less than the convexity of the buccal outline due to the small and underdeveloped lingual cusp. The lingual cusp is almost two-thirds of the height of the buccal cusp. The buccal and lingual triangular ridges extending from the tip of the lingual and buccal cusps both are seen. The mesial marginal ridge is well observed on this aspect which is located almost parallel to the buccal triangular ridge. This mesial marginal ridge ends at the starting point of the mesiolingual developmental groove. 
The surface of the crown is not in line with the root outlines. It presents an overhang over the root of the chhat. The tip of the lingual cusp is approximately at a line with the lingual outline of the root. The buccal cusp tip is often centered over the root. It may however be a little buccal to the center of the root. The cervical line on the mesial surface curves evenly to the occlusal surface. The average depth of curvature is about 1 mm. The surface of the crown is smooth except for the mesolingual developmental groove. On the distal aspect of the tooth, the outlines almost resemble the mesial aspect of the tooth, except for few differences. The distal marginal ridge is higher than the mesial marginal ridge, that's why the occlusal surface is not much visible from this aspect. The distal marginal ridge is horizontal in position when compared with the mesial marginal ridge. The cervical line is less curved and no developmental groove is present on the distal aspect. From the occlusal aspect, the tooth has some ridges, fossae and grooves. The outlines of the crown is roughly diamond shaped. The large buccal cusp and small lingual cusp both are visible from the occlusal view. The tooth has prominent mesial and distal marginal ridges and the buccal and lingual cuspal ridges. The buccal cuspal ridges are the mesiobuccal and the distobuccal cuspal ridges located on the mesial and distal sides of the buccal cusp and the buccal triangular ridge extending from the buccal cusp tip to the center of the occlusal surface. The lingual cusp also has the same ridges which are comparatively much smaller. These ridges for the lingual cusp are the mesolingual and the distolingual cuspal ridges and the lingual triangular ridge, which again extends from the lingual cusp tip and meets the buccal triangular ridge at the center. The buccal triangular ridge is much longer than the lingual triangular ridge. Two fossas called the distal and mesial fossa are also present, which unlike other teeth are not triangular in shape. Where the distal fossa is circular in shape, the mesial fossa is much linear in shape. Two grooves are present on the occlusal surface of the chat the mesial developmental groove and the distal developmental groove, both located on the mesial and distal fossas. The mesial developmental groove is located on the mesial fossa, which extends and joins the mesiolingual developmental groove on the lingual surface of the tooth. Few supplementary grooves may also be present. I hope this video helps. If you think this video was really helpful, please hit the like button and share the video ahead. If you have got any questions or suggestions, you may write them down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.